Welcome to This Is More Architecture. I'm Peter. I'm here with Gal from Absagon. Gal, good to have you here. Hi, uh, great being here. All right, so before we talk about your solution, uh, tell us a bit about your company. So Absagon is a monitoring company for modern cloud applications. That's it. All right. Uh, and what's the problem you're solving? So what we're trying to do is we look at a modern cloud application, and they are highly distributed, and they use many managed services, right? Uh, what we're trying to do is take uh, the three pillars of monitoring, logs, metrics, and traces, and combine them together instead of having different tools to give you the full observability to your system. OK, sounds interesting. And this is what you've built. So uh, walk us through. So what's going on here is this, this is the part of the architecture that's in charge of generating metrics for Lambda functions. Uh, we, what, part of the things that we're monitoring is Lambda functions for our customers. And we want to be able to uh, understand different metrics about them. Memories, um, when they are out of memories, if they had a timeout, if they had errors, things like that. So the first thing that we do here is if we have the client's Lambda function, we have to get data about it, right? So what we chose to do is to use the CloudWatch integration with Kinesis to stream different parts of the Lambda's CloudWatch logs into a Kinesis in our account. And this is the first part where we get data from our users to our system. Mm -hmm. OK, I see. So you grant access basically to your customers' accounts, uh, from your customers' accounts to your account, and allow uh, basically data influx into a Kinesis stream. Um, OK, I see. What happens next? What's the next part? OK, so this Kinesis is getting parts of the logs of a Lambda, right? When a Lambda started executing, when it finished executing, and now we have to transform these logs into what we call invocation records, records that describe different invocations of our client's lambdas. So this is what this lambda is in charge uh, of. It's basically a transform lambda, right? Uh, it gets data from this kinesis, which is log data. And using this DynamoDB, which is the DynamoDB that stores data about the functions of our customers, how many memory do, we have, do they have, how many uh, times they have, what is their timeout, using data from this database, it can analyze these logs and create what we call invocation records. Records that describe, OK, there was an invocation. Um, it took x, y, z. It had an error. It didn't have an error. It had a timeout. Uh, and also, it can update this database for something that we call partial invocations. So because Lambda is being triggered with partial data from Kinesis, like chunks of logs from a lot of customers, sometimes it's, uh, we don't get it all in the same Lambda invocation. So we also use this database to keep track of what's going on. At the end, we get this Kinesis stream, which is a stream of all the records of our different uh, clients' invocations. Mm -hmm. OK, sounds really good. So uh, that uh, DynamoDB is uh, containing data from all of, uh, all of your customers, yeah. right? And you utilize that information to power that decision-making process. Exactly. But also, you do also improve that data continuously while you're running and making your decisions. That's uh, pretty interesting. So uh, we have Kinesis right now here. I see two um, flows right now. Um, so talk me through this one, maybe. Yeah, so this Kinesis has invocation records, right? And this is something pretty valuable for us in AppSigon. Uh, but we want to do different things with these invocations. So the first thing we want to do is we want to allow the user to very fast, when he has a request ID or a link to a specific invocation, maybe from a trace, which is a different part in our system, mm -hmm. to be able to look at, on the data of this invocation. Uh, so this is what this part is in charge of. Uh, it's basically a storage that is really fast for a specific query of one specific item. We take the invocation record from this Kinesis. We send them to this Lambda function. Mm -hmm. Now, this Lambda function is in charge of writing them into serverless Aurora database so our system can query it later. Now, usually Lambda and Aurora doesn't mix right. Uh, doesn't mix well, right? Because uh, connection pooling is can be issue yeah. uh, can be problematic with Lambda. Uh, but the Kinesis Lambda integration solves this for us because Kinesis basically limits how many concurrent Lambdas are executing mm -hmm. at the same time. All right. Okay. So, see, so do you achieve two things. You, you have a storage uh, for pretty much instant querying, right? Which happens here. And you make sure that you buffer or protect an over, from an overload. Yeah. OK. Um, so what happens right here? So the second part is the more aggregative part, right? Because looking at a specific invocation is nice. But when you want to look at an overview of your, have an overview of your system, you sometimes want to look uh, at aggregated metrics. For, let's say, for example, what's the P90 duration of a specific mm -hmm. Lambda function? Mm -hmm. Because if it's being close to timeout, uh, then maybe I'm going to have a problem soon. So this is what this part is in charge of, mm -hmm. making those disaggregated data. So we take these invocation records, 
and we throw them into fire hose. Mm -hmm. Now fire hose batches them together and put them in a tree for us. Now we have kind of a data lake here, right? All of the invocation being stored in a specific S3, which we can query using Athena uh, in order to uh, get the results that we need. OK. Uh, in fact, Athena and S3 work very well together. However, what's important is that the data stored here needs to be optimized, right, in, in terms of structure. So I assume that uh, seeing glue right here, um, that this plays a role, right? Yeah. So what we're doing here is we don't want to store all those JSONs in the S3 because it's not very efficient, not for Athena and not storage-wise in the S3. Mm -hmm. So we integrated Glue with Firehose. We basically uh, decided of the, what this data lake looks like in Glue, and we turned on the data conversion in Firehose uh, when, in, when we integrated it with Glue. So basically, JSON records are coming into Firehose, but Firehose is shooting out parquet records uh, whose structure is defined by this glue table uh, and is optimized for our queries. Mm -hmm. All right. OK, Gal, this is a great solution. Now, overall, as you're connecting with uh, many of your customers, so what's the load that you're able to cope with? So this system is designed to deal with a very high load. Mm -hmm. uh, we have hundreds of thousands of lambdas that we're monitoring for our clients with billions of invocations per month. Uh, so you can say it's a lot of data that we're ingesting. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's actually why, A, we're using serverless, because mm -hmm. a lot of these things are auto-scaling pretty easily. And secondly, we try to cut the data as soon as possible. So streaming the logs, we only stream very relevant lines that are relevant for us. Over here, we're not sending all of the logs. We're only creating invocation records. Uh, Firewalls is dropping data. This Lambda is dropping data. We only stream the data that we need in order to proceed. I see. So we're very cautious about limiting uh, to what really matters, yeah. uh, reducing to what really matters. Okay, thanks. Carl, well, thank you very much for sharing this with us, and uh, thanks for watching this in architecture.